take out our Bibles this morning. We're going to turn to Acts chapter 9 here today. Matter of fact, all you youngins, if you go with Brother Kyle and Miss Hannah this morning. Acts chapter 9. find it, if you would stand, please, for the reading of the Word of God, Acts chapter 9. The Bible says, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus. To the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or many, he might be bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. By the way, there is uh, Damascus. There are many that believe that that is the oldest city, uh, current city, the oldest uh, continuing city in the world in history. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said, And him, Arise and go to the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they laid him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and he comes to the Lord uh, in addition to Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am your Lord. The Lord said unto him, Arise, and go to the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he hath seen in the vision of man and man and eyes coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. And I answered, Lord, I heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath the authority from the chief priests to find all that call on my name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he hath a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias asked me this way, and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus. By the way, it's interesting that that is the Lord, even Jesus. The Lord is Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. That appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hast sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he received me, he was strengthened and was all certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them, and called on his name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews, which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. The Lord God, we come before you. I pray that you would bless your word. God, I pray for liberty this morning. And God, I, Lord, I cannot preach any message that anybody needs to hear. But Lord, you can. And God, I pray that you would humbly take this thing and you would use it for thy glory. And God, that you would deal with us wherever you need to be dealt with. And God, I desire that everybody see Christ for who he is, the Savior of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Here in the beginning of chapter 9, we see somebody named Saul. By the way, this is the same person that one day would have his name changed to Paul, and he would be the great apostle that uh, God would send out to the Gentiles. But before then, he, we know that he was a Jew. As a matter of fact, he said, I was not just a Jew. I was a Jew of Jews. Ah, if anybody believed in the law, I believed in the law. If anybody believed in religion, I believed in religion. If anybody, are you hearing me this morning? If anybody did anything that had any religious fervor in it, I did more and I did it better than anybody else. But can I tell you this morning, can I get an amen, that religion does not save anybody. Matter of fact, if we find out what religion did here, religion lacks intimidation. Look here in verse number one. And Saul had breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of old. Whoa, religion loves intimidation. Matter of fact, and I'm just going to call it out today. I hope you don't mind it. Uh, if you do mind, I don't mind. It's okay. It's not going to bother me at all. Because it's all about the Word of God. Somebody say, man, how about the religion loves this kind of intimidation? As a matter of fact, it sounds a lot like Islam. Mm, isn't that something? As a matter of fact, let me tell you this. Judaism and Islam, oh, I'm not saying that they're anywhere close to one another, but they did desire and they did use intimidation and the, this idea of breathing out threatening and slaughter against anybody that did not believe the way that they believed. Now, you might say, but preacher, even you preach that, uh, that people don't believe in Jesus Christ as, as what the Bible says, that you teach and preach that they'll go to hell. Yes, friend, I do believe that because the Bible teaches that, but here's the difference. I'm not trying to threaten them. I'm not trying to destroy them. I'm not trying to take their life. I'm not trying to shorten their existence on earth. I'm not calling anybody. They may be an unbeliever, but I do not believe that infidels need to be destroyed. And by the way, you need to understand this. Even 
of God in his, his divine knowledge does not desire man to die. If anything, it was man's sin that separated him from God. And because of that God and because of God's love, he said, listen, I'll send my son, Jesus Christ, to redeem you into myself, to bring you back and to give you life, a hope for eternity with me in heaven. You see, there is a difference between Christianity and Judaism. There is a difference even between Christianity, and when I say that I'm using that term specifically, I do not mean it in its loose defined the term. I mean that according to the scriptures here, real belief in Jesus offers salvation to all men. And you need to know this, we cannot all come to Jesus by our own road. We must come to Jesus by his way. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. It's not about my way of salvation. It is not about my interpretation of the scriptures. It is by Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen. But in it somehow, religion can affect your way. If you're not careful, you're going to end up with spiritual halitosis. Can I get an amen? It said here that soul is yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter. Friend, it will affect you if you ain't careful. But not only do we see that religion lies intimidation, but you need to know that religion lies manipulation. It says there at the end of verse number one, it says that where did he go? He went to the high priest. And by the way, most of these other kinds of things, they want to manipulate people. Uh, they want to uh, use uh, their desires, uh, not even the scripture, they want to use their desires to get what they want out of people. By the way, a preacher should not be a snake oil salesman. Amen. A preacher should not be a slick millie. A preacher should not be a manipulator of men. But a preacher ought to be able to stand behind the sacred desk and say, Thus saith the Lord. If this is what God's word says. Then stay here. Oh, the uh, Saul was trying to go behind the scenes and cope with the high priest and use religion in his own way to manipulate people. Not only that, but if you look here, religion also likes instigation. Look at verse number two. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he found, if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He said, man, I want some letters. I want to start something. I want to start some trouble. By the way, friends, can I just tell you, hey, we're up here high on the hill, like a lighthouse, uh, calling out over Georgia, trying to send out the gospel call, trying to stand here and share the light of Jesus Christ. But you need to know this, friend, that there's a lot of other people that are trying to do, they'll try and say, oh, but we're doing the same thing. But in reality, they're not. The only thing we're trying to instigate is the people that are coming to the Lord. We're not trying to instigate trouble within Rome. We're trying to instigate salvation within Rome. We're not trying to instigate a movement within Rome. We're trying to show people in Rome that there is a master. Somebody say amen. Not only that, you see there at the end of verse number uh, two, what did he want to do to them? He wanted to bind them. Oh, see, that's another thing that religion wants to do. It wants to dominate you. Religion, it loves intimidation. It loves manipulation. It loves instigation. It loves domination. And can I tell you, friend, that Jesus Christ has come, that he might set you free, set you free from the sin, set you free from yourself. Somebody say amen. Set you free from your problems. Set you free from the heartache. Oh, I'm not telling you that life isn't going to be nothing, uh, nothing but a bowl of cherries. I ain't telling you that you won't have any trouble in this life, but I'm telling you that when you find Jesus Christ, you'll find one that'll give you peace for whatever it is that you're going to have to walk through in your life. Somebody say amen, praise God, and the Lord, hallelujah, amen. So what happens here, because this is what I want you to see, a lost soul needs the light. Look, if you would, at verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. Does everybody see that there? By the way, I just want you to know this. Uh, Paul did not know it, but he was living in darkness. Paul did not know it, but his religion had blinded him from that which was true. Paul thought he understood everything. Paul thought he had everything figured out. Paul thought, Paul thought, Paul thought, until the light came on. Can I get an amen? Matter of fact, I want to mention this to you. If you want to look this up, you can. We're in the same book here. Uh, but look at Acts chapter 26. This is another place where the Apostle Paul later was sharing his testimony with others. Here's what he had to say in, in Acts chapter 26 and verse number 13. He said, at midday, O king, I saw in the way. Did you hear what time of day it was? What does it say there? Verse 13. At midday. Did I see it there? Come on now, y'all with me this morning, stick with me here. The Bible says, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, then which journeyed with me. Turn back a couple pages to chapter 22. Here's another account uh, where he was sharing his testimony with someone else. The Bible says in Acts chapter 22 and verse number 6, And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, there it is, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light about me. Back in our text, now in Acts chapter 9, I just want you to know, here he is, he's getting ready to experience true confession. And the reason why is because the nature of the light. Here he was at living a religious life. Here he was with all kinds of scriptural knowledge. Here he was with a lot of spiritual feelings. Here he was with all kinds of things and principles and precepts that had been given to him. But yet he was still in the light. Proverbs 4.19, blesses a man... Uh, um, 
Uh, Proverbs 4.19, uh, now I'm getting a, a, a mistake here in my head. The Bible says this, let me read it to you here. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. In other words, the Apostle Paul, uh, before he became the Apostle Paul, Saul here, he was living in a stupor. He was living under religion. He was living thinking that he had everything figured out. He was living with his own understanding. He was living in the revelation of his own knowledge. But he had no understanding about anything that was going on. He said, my goodness, when the light came on, there were no questions anymore. By the way, I don't know, there might be somebody out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You had lived a life of religion. You had lived a life of all kinds of things being, being, being uh, revealed and being shown and being taught or whatever it might be but it wasn't until the light came on that you knew that you needed to be born again boy that's the trouble today people are so blinded by themselves and they're blinded by their heart and they're blinded by their mind and they're blinded by their works and they cannot see Christ John 1.10, he was in the beginning and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. John 3.19, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Somebody say amen. Oh, you might say, but I, I believe in religious things, but religion does not save anybody. There must be be a savior otherwise all you have is rituals all you have are trinkets and all you have is just small little insignificant tokens not only was he going to experience true confession but he was going to experience true conviction Matter of fact, you don't hear him touting now, do you? Boy, there he was in verse number one. Every breath that was coming out of his mouth, what was he saying? He was breathing out threatenings. He was breathing out slaughter. All of a sudden, God had a way of knocking him off of his high horse. Can I get an amen? And all of a sudden, he just says, uh, who are you, Lord? Come on now. Amen. Who are you, Lord? Yeah, I thought I had this thing all figured up. I thought I had this thing all figured out. I thought I understood things that nobody else even knows in the Bible, but I didn't know anything. Now he's convicted. Now he begins to look heavenward here in this place, and he cannot even see. But he says, Lord, 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 what should I do? Tell you this, he accepted true conversion. I want to point out something. Not, not only does a lost soul need the light. Has anybody in here ever been to a lighthouse? It's amazing when you go in those things, especially the old ones, that uh, they, they bring you in and it's just a little itty bitty thing and you walk this winding staircase to get all the way up to the top and then they have uh, 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 um, thick glass and they're all magnifiers but different levels, some of them with seven, uh, five, seven, uh, ten different levels uh, of surrounding glass where it takes the light that it receives and casts it out greater than what they had. Friend, let me tell you something. Here it was at a noonday. Here it was at high noon. Boy, that reminds me of Gary Cooper. Anybody here say amen to that? Amen. Uh, but here they are at high noon. And, uh, and sure enough, the goodness of God shines out and knocks him down. And he's like, my goodness, I've never seen anything close to that. I've never seen that in the scriptures. I've never seen that in its glory. I've never seen God in that manner. I've never seen it before in that fashion. And by the way,
not only did he need the light, but he needed the Lord. I love that verse. I've already mentioned it. Verse number five. But look at verse four. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Please, would you hear him? Would you come to him? And would you accept his gift of salvation? Because he loves you. The Bible says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I beg you, I beg you, you don't have to listen to me, but you do have to listen to his word. You will be responsible to God for that one day. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. <laughs> the Lord, <laughs> this Lord, this real Lord, he was not found in religious teaching. He was not found in any religious training. He was not found in, in any religious entity. He had to be, you have to come unto him by grace through faith. That is the only way. To receive him. Last thing I want you to see. Look at verse number 10. We see that a lost soul needs light. And that a lost soul needed the Lord. Verse number 10. We see that a lost soul needs love. Look at this here.
Here's what it says. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called never forget that time that I knew I needed help from heaven and I'm here to tell you that God is faithful how many of you can identify with that you know for sure you're saved oh yes friend there's a sorrow of repentance but there in Acts chapter 9 there's a sermon of repentance and then there is a surrendered response and here's the response was, this whole thing is up to the Lord. Why don't you come ahead and put them on me. the invitation and here's the whole point friend do you know Christ today as your personal Savior if you don't you need to come there's no special power down here at this altar I'd love to take the Bible and show you as I look out on this congregation I see a number of you a number a good number of you that have been saved right here 
within the last three years. I say, praise God for that. And some of y'all grew up in church. Come on. Some of you did grow up in church, but you didn't know Jesus. He's the only way. Church ain't going to help you get to heaven. It'll help your walk, maybe, but church don't get nobody to heaven. You will never be able to look at God and say, well, I went to Rome Baptist Temple. That's my ticket into this place. And he's just going to say, class, and say, bless God, I'm going to live my life for the glory of God. What goodness, what glory, what grace. With every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. Won't you search your own heart? If you died right now, right now, if you died right now, do you know, are you 100% That if you died today, do you know that you'd go to heaven? If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? You say, Pastor, there is no doubt about it. I know. God bless you. Thank you. And put your hands down. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I can't say that I'm 100% sure. I just can't. I'd like to know, but I just don't know. Is there anyone like that? Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. God bless you. Thank you. Someone else. Preacher, pray for me. I'm just not sure I'm saved. Praise God. Would you let us take the Bible and show you how you can know that heaven is your home? Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I know for sure I'm saved. I know it, but Pastor, just be honest, I need to get some things right. I need to come back to the Lord. I, I'm just away from Him. Is there anyone like that here? Pastor, that's me. Just put your hand up and put it right back down. Nobody's looking. God bless you. Thank you. Someone else, preacher, pray for me. I'm just, I just need to get some things right to serve God.